Luke chapter 22. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and the scribes sought how they might put him to death, for they feared the people. Satan entered into Judas, who was also called Iscariot, who was counted with the twelve. He went away and talked with the chief priests and captains about how he might deliver him to them. They were glad and agreed to give him money. He consented and sought an opportunity to deliver him to them in the absence of the multitude. The day of unleavened bread came, on which the Passover must be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. They said to him, What do you want us to prepare? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him into the house which he enters. Tell the master of the house, the teacher says to you, Where is the guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large, furnished upper room. Make preparations there. They went, found things as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, he sat down with the twelve apostles. He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will no longer by any means eat of it until it is fulfilled in God's kingdom. He received a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, I will not drink it all again from the fruit of the vine, until God's kingdom comes. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. Likewise, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. The Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man through whom he is betrayed. They began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do this thing. A dispute also arose among them, which of them was considered to be greatest. He said to them, The kings of the nations lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are called benefactors. And not so with you. Rather, the one who is greater among you, let him become as the younger, and one who is governing, as one who serves. For who is greater, one who sits at the table, or one who serves? Isn't it he who sits at the table? That I am among you as one who serves, that you are those who have continued with me in my trials. I confer on you a kingdom, even as my Father conferred on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. You will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan asked to have all of you, that he might sift you as wheat, that I prayed for you, that your faith wouldn't fail. You, when once you have turned again, establish your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. He said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will by no means crow today until you deny that you know me three times. He said to them, when I sent you out without purse, bag, and sandals, did you lack anything? They said, nothing. Then he said to them, but now, whoever has a purse, let him take it, and likewise a bag. Whoever has none, let him sell his cloak and buy a sword. For I tell you that this which is written must still be fulfilled in me. He was counted with transgressors, for that which concerns me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. He said to them, That is enough. He came out and went, as his custom was, to the Mount of Olives. His disciples also followed him. When he was at the place, he said to them, Pray that you don't enter into temptation. He was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. Being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. His sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he rose up from his prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief, and said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, a crowd appeared. He who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. They came near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When those who were around him saw what was about to happen, they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? A certain one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus answered, Let me at least do this, and he touched his ear and healed him. Jesus said to the chief priests, captains of the temple, and elders who had come against him, have you come out as against the robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you in the temple daily, you didn't stretch out your hands against me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. They seized him and led him away and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed from a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat among them. A certain servant girl saw him as he sat in the light and looking intently at him, said, This man also was with him. He denied Jesus, saying, Woman, I don't know him. After a little while, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter answered, Man, I am not. After about one hour passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, Truly this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. 
But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you were talking about. Immediately, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the Lord's word, how he said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. The men who held Jesus mocked him and beat him. Having blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, Prophecy, who is the one who struck you? They spoke many other things against him, insulting him. As soon as it was day, the assembly of the elders of the people were gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away into their council, saying, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you won't believe. And if I ask, you will in no way answer me or let me go. From now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all said, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say it, because I am. They said, Why do we need any more witness? For we ourselves have heard from his own mouth. Luke chapter 23 The whole company of them rose up and brought him before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting the nation, forbidding paying taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Pilate asked them, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered them, So you say. Pilate said to the chief priests and the multitudes, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee even to this place. But when Pilate heard Galilee mentioned, he asked if the man was a Galilee. When he found out that he was in Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem during those days. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he had wanted to see him for a long time, because he had heard many things about him. He hoped to see some miracle done by him. He questioned him with many words, but he gave no answers. The chief priests and the scribes stood, vehemently accusing him. Herod with his soldiers humiliated him and mocked him. Dressing him in luxurious clothing, they sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before that they were enemies with each other. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me as one that perverts the people, and behold, having examined him before you, I found no basis for a charge against this man concerning those things of which you accuse him. Neither has Herod, for I sent you to him, and see, nothing worthy of death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. Now he had to release one prisoner to them at the feast, but they all cried out together, saying, Away with this man, release to us Barabbas, one who was thrown into prison for a certain revolt in the city and for murder. Then Pilate spoke to them again, wanting to release Jesus, but they shouted, saying, Crucify, crucify him. He said to them the third time, Why, what evil has this man done? I have found no capital crime in him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But they were urgent with loud voices, asking that he might be crucified. Their voices and the voices of the chief priests prevailed. Pilate decreed that what they asked for should be done. He released him who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they asked, that he delivered Jesus up to their will. When they led him away, they grabbed one Simon of Siren, coming from the country, and laid the cross on him to carry it after Jesus. A great multitude of the people followed him, including women who also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to tell the mountains, Fall on us, and tell the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in the green tree, what will be done in the dry? There were also others, two criminals, led with him to be put to death. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified him there with the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Dividing his garments among them, they cast lots. The people stood watching. The rulers with them also scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if this is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. An inscription was also written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged insulted him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself in us. But the other answered, and rebuking him said, Don't you even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? Can we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds, that this man has done nothing wrong? He said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. 
All the multitudes that came together to see this, when they saw the things that were done, returned home beating their breasts. All his acquaintances and the women who followed with him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things. Behold, there was a man named Joseph, who was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who was also waiting for God's kingdom. This man went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. He took it down and wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a tomb that was cut in stone, where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of the preparation, and the Sabbath was drawing near. The women who had come with him out of Galilee followed after, and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. They returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. Chapter 24 But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they and some others came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They entered in and didn't find the Lord Jesus' body. While they were greatly perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling clothing. Becoming terrified, they bowed their faces down to the earth. The men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He isn't here, but is risen. Remember what he told you when he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered up into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. They remembered his words, returned from the tomb, and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now they were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. The other women with them told these things to the apostles. These words seemed to them to be nonsense, and they didn't believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he departed to his home, wondering what had happened. Behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was sixty stadia from Jerusalem. They talked with each other about all of these things which had happened. While they talked and questioned together, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, What are you talking about as you walk and are sad? One of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things which have happened there in these days? He said to them, What things? He said to him, The things concerning Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him, though we were hoping that it was he who would redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Also, certain women of our company amazed us, having arrived early at the tomb, and when they didn't find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. Some of us went to the tomb and found it just like the women had said, but they didn't see him. He said to them, Foolish people, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, didn't the Christ have to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Beginning from Moses and from all the prophets, he explained to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. They came near to the village where they were going, and he acted like he would go further. They urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is almost evening, and the day is almost over. He went in to stay with them. When he had sat down at the table with them, he took the bread and gave thanks. Breaking it, he gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him, then he vanished out of their sight. They said to one another, Were our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us along the way? And while he opened the scriptures to us, he rose up that very hour, returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and those who were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. He related the things that happened along the way, and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. As they said these things, Jesus himself stood among them, and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were terrified and filled with fear, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. He said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is truly me. Touch me and see, for a spirit doesn't have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they still didn't believe for joy and wondered, he said to them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of a broiled fish and some honeycomb. He took them and ate in front of them. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you, that all things which are written in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms concerning me must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds, that they might understand the scriptures. He said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send out the promise of my Father on you, that wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. He led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he blessed them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen.